they would appear to be nothing more than a mirage. So that's what- That's what I've been saying! It's a hologram of fraud! It has been for years! HSBC, there's nothing there except a lie! It's traded on the FTSE as a lie! If you want to buy invested in lie, buy it. Buy it! Buy it. God, God. It's a lie! It's a lie! It's a lie! They're lying! There's nothing there! It's a piece of dirt! If you buy that stock, you're buying financial terrorism! Don't you understand that? Do you value your children at all? Or do you want to see them sent to a concentration camp? Wait, oh. I forgot. Dancing with the Stars is on. Never mind. <laughs>
In our view, HSBC has not made the necessary adjustments during the quantitative easing reprieve. Rather, it has allowed legacy problems to linger as new ones in emerging markets gather pace. The result has been extreme earnings overstatement, causing HSBC to become one of the largest practitioners of capital forbearance globally. This charade appears to be ending. Given how few earning levers remain besides selling off core elements of the franchise and the stringencies of Basel III compliance. Here you have it that they're saying that, first of all, quantitative easing reprieve. We've all lost economic sovereignty by that regard. I mean, we, there's still a number one, Hong Kong, number two is Singapore, economic freedom. But we've all globally lost economic sovereignty to this the big banks, big business, big bureaucrats who have been printing money for the bailouts of these banks. But despite all that printing, the hundreds of trillions of dollars of printing by central banks, despite all of that, they say that HSBC has this capital forbearance <laughs> that they've been lying, extreme earnings lies. Oh, they've been lying about their revenues. Yes. They've been lying about their income. They've been lying about their balance sheet. They've been lying about their income statement. They've been lying about their liabilities. They've been lying about their involvement in laundering money for Hezbollah. They've been lying about their involvement in laundering money for Mexican drug cartels. They've been lying about their involvement in the American mortgage crisis and the dot-com crisis and the housing crisis. Um, I would imagine if you ask the chairman and the president and the CEO of HSBC right now what they had for lunch, they would lie. They, they, they may just had a bologna sandwich and they said, we just had a turkey sandwich. Because it's in their culture, it's in their DNA. They grew up liars, they are liars, they'll die liars. Their DNA, if you take it to another planet, another universe, another parallel dimension, you could sell it on the open market as DNA that's made of pure lies. It, whatever value that has in a parallel universe, their lies, their DNA is made up of pure lies. You know, it's funny that they threatened to leave the UK if they were actually asked to obey the law. I mean, imagine Jimmy Saddle. Here's a guy who committed pedophilia with over 400 children, and he's taken to the court, taken to the old Bailey, and his defense is, if you prosecute me, I'm going to go to Switzerland. That's what HSB is saying. If you prosecute me and our scads and scores and hundreds of incidents of fraud, we threaten to leave the country. And the government says, oh, no, we need your fraud to pay our political campaigns. Please stay. Cameron, you're a... So what Forensic a loser. Asia says of their uh, stated capital ratios that they would appear to be nothing more than a mirage. So that's what. That's what I've been saying! <laughs> it's a hologram of fraud! It has been for years! HSBC, there's nothing there except a lie! It's traded on the FTSE as a lie! If you want to buy invested in a lie, buy it. Buy it, my God! It's a lie! It's a lie! It's a lie! They're lying! There's nothing there! It's a piece of dirt! If you buy that stock, you're buying financial terrorism! Don't you understand that? Do you value your children at all? Or do you want to see them sent to a concentration camp? Wait, oh. I forgot. Dancing with the Stars is on. Never mind. <laughs> so the equivalent in the U.S. to this miragist bank here in uh, London is J.P. Morgan. So we're going to turn to a J.P. Morgan headline and their lies and what economic sovereignty really looks like. Los Angeles to consider cutting ties with J.P. Morgan. A Los Angeles councilman proposed Wednesday that the nation's second largest city consider ending tens of millions of dollars of financial ties with troubled J.P. Morgan Chase & Company. A motion introduced by Democrat Gil Sedillo seeks a review of city business with the nation's largest bank as well as an analysis of legal options to end those contracts. This is what real economic sovereignty looks like. In fact, if this passes, they should, in a real list by the Heritage Foundation, Los Angeles should top the list of that economic freedom. Remember what Eric Holder said and did when Jamie Dimon was brought down in Washington uh, for committing acts of economic fraud and terrorism. He said that uh, we are unable to prosecute Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan here at the Department of Justice. This is Eric Holder, the Attorney General of the United States, saying he is incapable of prosecuting terrorism in America. So why don't you just resign because you're sucking up too much oxygen? The entire 
uh, all the U.S. attorney generals. So the Preet Bharara, he said when he fined them $2 billion and a deferred prosecution agreement for their role in the Madoff uh, Ponzi scheme, he said he had to think of the collateral consequences if the, a criminal case were brought, i.e. they can't do it because fraud is so endemic to the whole U.S. But here, Los Angeles is saying they could get rid of them. We're going to look at these contracts. Why do we want to do business with a fraudster? If they're committing fraud everywhere else, is it likely that we're going to be, <laughs> presumably, they're committing fraud against us as well? Now, the mayor of Los Angeles who is Eric Garcetta, he said that um, he's, he ha hasn't reviewed this motion by the councilman, but he said, quote, I want to make sure we are putting our money in a bank that does more good than harm. So I think it is a legitimate question to ask. Well, why don't they just replace the uh, stars on the American flag with uh, Eric Holder getting uh, Jamie Dimon's thumb up a schwing schwing? I think that would be a much more accurate depiction of what's going on in that country. And you can't find another bank to find that's not part of this corrupt system. That's rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. They're, they're all corrupt because they're all tied to the central bank, mm. whether it's Janet Yellen or Mark Carney, who are tied to the Bank of International Settlements, and they're all basically corrupt. So they're all eating the same toxic stew, and they're all part of the same racket. It's like if you were going after the mafia, you just can't go after one part of the mafia. You have to go after the mafia as a racket. It's, it's a racketeering. Well, when you mention Stu, of course, it makes me think of those Mexican drug cartels that HSBC does business with, and they would melt people down into a stew. And us doing business with them, we've turned ourselves into stew. We need to declare economic freedom, sovereignty, financial freedom and sovereignty from these banks. Yeah, or how about a head sitting on a turtle, like on that show Breaking Bad? That would be a nice American flag. It would say a lot more than the stupid stars and stripes that went out of... And nobody believes that nonsense anymore. Well, we're out of time, Stacey. We must uh, move on. Thank you.